What's up, guys? So today on the podcast, we have Elliot Marshall. He is a uh, former UFC fighter, uh, a jiu-jitsu black belt, jiu-jitsu gym owner, and uh, we we dive into it. Uh, he, he was interesting. He like he dove into like all these like deeper things. So like we, a lot of times, like we'll talk about superficial stuff, you know. And then some people, not everyone, but he's one of these guys that then like dove into all these little nooks and crannies that um, some really deep stuff related to like life and stuff like that, not just on the mat. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy the podcast and, and get something from it that'll be useful to you. We also do have some specific training tips. I think one, one where we talk about um, how to develop like better defense on the mat and how he, how he's actually doing it right now when mm. he's doing um, by the way, be careful if you decide to take his approach. Uh, you, you'll know what I'm talking about in just a minute. Um, but again, it could be useful for some of you that are trying to work on your defense and get better with uh, your ability to escape bad spots. Um, as always, guys, thanks to our sponsors, Charles Webb, um, the CBD that I've been using, gosh, for some years now. Um, they've got both the regular CBD. They've got you know the tinctures and stuff, and they also have a THC free one, uh, which I've used and, and thought it was was good. So it, I, I didn't notice any difference. I can always tell when I stop using it, both in like the overall sort of inflammation in my body, mm. and then also like what related to my sleep. I can definitely feel the difference, and uh, I uh, I did not. It just went kept going. So I, I would definitely recommend it if you want to try it out and you maybe have to get tested and stuff like that. Look on their website if you decide to get some because I know a lot of people get interested in CBD, but you know sometimes they have to do certain tests that are zero tolerance or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and so it's it sucks. Um, yeah, it's like point zero one THC content. It's very you're unlikely to yeah. test. It's so weird to me too. It's like, well, like who cares? I think we're, we're we're getting there. I mean, I think uh, as uh, a society, we're getting there. Yeah. I think there was just such a you're dealing with so much misinformation, Old baggage, yeah. And it's like it's hard to change those things. It's also whose interests are what. Like, what does certain entities? What is their interest in keeping you know THC or or what have you in it illegal, like or or, or whatever, yeah. not yeah. something people can use. Which obviously we're, we're starting to find out how beneficial it can be for many things. Mm -hmm. um, but, well, I mean, I know so many people that like, like it's like they use like THC, obviously like marijuana. They use it as part of their like way to like deal with stress. Yeah, just like yeah. someone like their uses like health, a, yeah. uses like a medication. It's kind of a natural medication that they use. It kind of chills them out and helps them kind of get through their day. Yep. You know, I'm not saying everybody got, has got to do it. I don't. I don't smoke or anything like that just because it's not really my thing. But like, I mean, live and let live. Well, there's know? a reason why it's there's medical marijuana yeah. now. There's a medical. They're finding the science is finding there's medical benefits yeah. to it. So well, and I'm also, to each their own. Yeah. Obviously, do your thing. You, you, you know, well, it's that's the my same thing. thing I, with I'm everything. very much, a, I'm very much like a who gets to decide what yeah. you can use and can't <laughs> use, right? Who gets to decide that, right? Who is ordained to 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 do that? You know, I, I don't necessarily like that idea. Of, live and let live, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, live and let live, and you know, again, within reason. But um, <laughs> if, right. you, if you guys want to check out some good CBD, right? Some good CBD products, check out Charles Webb. I'm a big fan of their sleep gummies. Yep. Um, I've given those out numerous times to my students, and then they end up like buying it. Um, so they're a big fan. They got little sample packs too, if you're interested in yeah. it. Um, the, the tinctures are really good. So those are just like the oil droppers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And again, I'm a big fan of the product because it's third party tested. So whatever's in there is, is, you know, what is actually in there. The, one of the reasons why you've probably seen like a bazillion, like, you know, companies from, uh, of, uh, CBD is because it's unregulated. So it can literally be just some person pops up, say, yeah, I got some CBD, here you go. And again, who knows what the heck's in there? They don't, you don't always know. And there could be a lot of what it says is in there, or it could be none of what it says it's in there. It could be all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so um, I like the fact that they're third party tested. So again, just like talking about a medication, if you're going to use something, like if you're going to take a Tylenol or if you're going to take like a medication, you kind of want to get your dose right so that if you find a dose that works for you, right? And, and CBD is one of those things too where you need to play around with the dosage sometimes because some people like are like me, I'm, I, I need a little bit less, mm. whereas other people can you may, maybe need a little bit more. But once you find your, your sort of sweet spot, then you can stick there opposed to like – who knows? Like you know, like you wouldn't want to take like a medication where it's a grab bag where you swallow a pill and <laughs> and let's cross your fingers that you get what you're supposed to get, right? So that's one of the things where once you kind of find your sweet spot with the product with the CBD product from Charlotte's Web, you can kind of keep using that same amount opposed to let me let me cross my fingers and I've got this new brand and let's hope it says it what it is. Yeah. Um, but check them out, charlottesweb.com. Promo code is Jujitsu, fifteen percent off the order. Um, and again, big thanks to our sponsor, Matt at Epic Roll. 
EpicRollBGJ.com is their website. If you're looking for anything related to geese, rash guards, shorts, uh, t-shirts, he's got a, that's that's a pretty cool shirt. It's a leg locker shirt. I like it. It almost like makes it. me think of a. Uh, it almost makes me think of like some like old school Nintendo start screen. Mm. Like it, like <laughs> it, like it looks like you know like you're playing like the game leg like locker. You know, yeah. and you like press it, press enter. I like it. It's um, it's like soft, comfortable. It's a, I well, got the extra medium on. Yeah. Well, and I like this. I like your shirts because again, just like that. Right. It says it says leg locker cross of it. Epic roll with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's got the Japanese. I assume Japanese. I don't know characters. The characters below. Um, attack the heel, knee, toe. It, it, it's very simple looking. Um, opposed to sometimes I feel like um, designs can sometimes be a little bit over to the top. Yeah, yeah. Can be. So, so again, if you want to check out some of his stuff, I'm also a big fan of all of his Nogi gear, um, especially those Velcro lists, shorts, no Velcro. Thank God. I'm 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 so like I was so tired of Velcro because it's like seriously it's like over the years I have so many pairs of shorts where they have like they've got like they're good they're in good shape there's no holes or nothing yeah. but I can't wear them because there's no the Velcro's gone you know like the Velcro just doesn't last and so I'm glad to like that we're like you know just you're basically just doing the scrunchy shorts with a drawstring on yeah. the inside and then just rolling with it and they're super like comfortable and like flowy mm-hmm. and you know feel good mobile yeah so check them out uh epic roll bgj.com promo code is jujitsu 15 percent off the order um uh, also big thanks to our sponsor hoist uh, h-o-i-s-t and uh it is kind of so to give you an idea what it is it's an, it's an electrolyte drink so it's you've got a little bit of sugar in there you got about out of this whole bottle i've got i'm looking at a 16 ounce bottle you've got 16 or excuse me 13 grams of sugar of added sugar and then you have from there you've got a bunch of electrolytes so one of the things if you use like just a uh, traditional like um you know sports drink you got a ton of sugar but you don't really have a ton of electrolytes so you get a ton of sugar um but you don't get say and you you'll typically have a lot of sodium but you don't also you don't have like a fair amount of like potassium and things like that mm. and you'll have a little bit but not nearly as much and um that's useful so like again because when you're when you think about your body essentially your body is if you think about what an electrolyte is, right? Electrolytes are minerals that help sort of uh, regulate the electrical like firing in your body. So when your muscle contracts, right, that is your body like there's a there's a, a an impulse there, and your body has to have the minerals like potassium, magnesium, calcium, things like that to make that happen. When that doesn't happen, then you run into issues like cramps. So for instance, um, I I think it's is it potassium because there's two. I'm like I think it's potassium where if your muscle contracts and you cramps up, mm. that's a pota- that's a potassium issue. I could have these mixed up. And it could be other things, of course, but I think that's that's one sign of a potassium like sort of uh, deficiency. Mm. And then there's magnesium, which is like your muscles are just cramping up yep. for no reason, right? Um, when again, so again, if you've ever run into cramps and stuff like that, you're probably not getting properly hydrated, um, whether that's just with water or if it's with um you know the other electrolytes this is one of the reasons why with my food i tend to like before training sessions i tend to salt things a little bit more with sea mm-hmm. salt to make sure i get those those minerals yeah. and things like that in there but again if you want a drink that you can take like I, ha- I took these to the competition this past weekend yeah um and it was sharing them uh check out uh hoist the website is drinkhoist.com. Uh, promo code is jujitsu and it's 10 percent off the order mm-hmm. uh, and again it's a um tastes really good I like it. <laughs> I, we, Mish and I went, my wife and I went. Um, you guys went bike riding, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, dude, we went a long bike ride. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting the itch, man. I, I'm drinking the, I'm drinking the old Kool Aid of, of the, of the bike riding. It's fun. Yeah. Where did so, you guys go bike riding? We went uh, Seneca Park. We yeah, went to the yeah, park yeah. and we did a nice long loop and um, we, we've got you know the, just the clipping pedals and stuff, doing the uh-huh. whole thing. She fell once. She was making fun of me because I fell a couple times. Yeah, and yeah. She's fallen a couple times, so yeah. she can't make fun of me. Anymore. Bike riding's fun, man. It, dude, it's so much fun, and I just I love. Uh, I've got a road bikes. So you can you can get going pretty yeah, pretty darn yeah. fast. It's just fun. It's kind of scary sometimes too. If you hit like a downhill yeah. and you're like, oh, yeah. and you're not used to it, like you'll get dude. You'll get I, moving. It's fun, um, but like I I was I was hitting that up. I was using hoist. I was like I I need to, and I felt good. I felt good because usually I'm, I'm pretty wiped out after some some cardio. Um, so I drank some right after. We both drank some, and it was I think it was really helpful yeah. for me because we actually went and did yard work the rest of the day. So I was like, 
it, it helped me. I, I I love it, and I like the little powders they have now. They have like the little powders you can yeah, because you, you, you can mix water. it with a lot of water. You can mix it, and you can take it with you if you need to, and mix it later. So, um, I really like it. it tastes good. So. Yeah, I use I have been using it during my two a day sessions, yeah. and I take some of the I take a packet and I'll put it into a larger container of water just to dilute it a little bit yeah. more, get some more water. Yep. In. So, but yeah, check them out. Um, good product. And uh, our last sponsor of the day is Manscaped. Manscaped. Um, dot com. The uh, the product that you have, if you're watching this right now, is the lawnmower. We got that sucker. Um, and uh, again, I've tried their products, everything from their cologne to the trimmer to everything, and uh, it's really good stuff. It's the uh, the actual trimmer. I like it because. It's re- it's since replaced my I still have it in the house but uh, it's replaced my old school trimmer mm-hmm. that I have with like the big the big thick one with the cord and everything else um, <laughs> that Je- like Jess when she would like be trimming my shoulders just don't would cut me with um, it's actually it's a really good trimmer it's waterproof you can use it there and again um, it's so funny when we first when we first brought them on as a sponsor I. Uh, you know, I, we did, and I was like, "Let me try out their product." And I like their products, and originally, when they sent us some stuff, I was thinking, "Like, who needs like?" Because their th- their thing, right, is male grooming below the belt or whatever, or you know, whatever it is, something like that. And uh, I'm like, "Who needs this?" And then you start using it, and you're like, "It's actually kind of handy." Mm-hmm. You know, it's like one of those things, like where like once you try it, you're like, "You know, it's actually really useful." Yeah, it's nice. I'm I'm a fan of the unboxing. I like unboxing. All their products, all their products come with like a really nice like uh, unboxing. It gives you that. Um, so if you. Uh, if you look at the iPhone, for instance, yeah. there was like, there's a, like the reason your iPhone case is like when you open it, it's like, and it like comes apart in a very particular way. Yeah. That was all by design. Like uh, the book uh, from Walter Isaacson um, about Steve Jobs, like yeah. his biography, like how much detail went into that. <laughs> so insane. To me. It is. And it's like, but there's a reason why when you open up that box, like people, um, they actually did like brain scans on people. And like when some people like some of these like fanatics for like yeah. Apple products, um, when they open up the products, they actually have the same sort of the same like mental f- areas fire as if they were having yeah. a religious experience. Oh, wow. Yeah. Crazy. Right. Um, now I'm not saying that you're going to have that with Mansi, but their packaging's really nice <laughs> and the products are good. Um, again, the, the, the product actually like the, for instance, the, the beer trimmer. I like it because it's wireless. You can take it in the water. I can use it on my beard down to like my toes. I can use it for on, wherever I want to get rid of some hair. Beat a T. Beat a T. Beat to toes. Um, I can use it from anywhere that I need to get rid of some hair. Perfect. Uh, my girlfriend can use it, and she can use it where she doesn't have to worry about cutting me because it's got the little like skin guard technology stuff on it. My wife will steal it and use it herself. Yeah. So. So. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it's a good product, and you can check out all their stuff. I'm also a big fan of their cologne too. Um, check out all their stuff at Manscaped.com. Promo code is Chujitsu20. Get twenty percent off. And uh, guys, if you want to support the podcast, you can also check out the uh, the Patreon that we have, patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast. At the time of recording this, I'm getting ready to upload a video that's uh, it's basically a narrated rolling video showing you uh, some of the things that I've been working on in a particular type of rolling style that I've been trying to use that is useful for sort of learning new techniques. Um, and if you want to check that out there, you can go to the website, patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast. And along with that, you'll get tons of content. But uh, it's a cool video that I'll be releasing, and it also supports the podcast so that we keep coming to you. And, uh, guys, with that said, let's get into the podcast with Elliot. <music> I'm always interested in people's kind of just, you know, you're, you're, I first heard about you on Tough. Mm-hmm. I saw you on the Ultimate Fighter and I was like, right. you know, you're a jiu jitsu guy and you're yeah. kind of the, the jiu jitsu guy on the show, one of the guys. And I was like, because you always, if we're jiu jitsu people, always root you're for always the jiu jitsu guy. Him. You always root for the jiu jitsu guy to win the show, right? <laughs> the I remember, was it Tough too that, um, oh, what was the name? I can't think of it, from Cincinnati. Uh, George, uh, George, 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 yeah, George was on there, and all yeah. he would do is like stand and punch people. Yeah, and I was right. like, George, take it to the ground. But I think he was season two. But like, he was a guy that was always so excited about watching, um, you know, just because, just, just because you go for the jujitsu guys, you always want yeah. them to win. It's always fun. It's like, uh, our, I don't know, it's like our bond, right? Yeah, yeah, like especially the older jujitsu guys because. We came up in a time when jujitsu was really hard, was much more difficult to learn. Yeah. So it was harder to get good. There was no internet. Uh, if you wanted to compete, uh, it cost a lot of fucking money. You had to travel all over the place. So, and you know, 
you're the o, you're the, we're the OGs of the jiu-jitsu world. <laughs> Spe- speaking of which, uh, what what time period, like what year did you start doing jiu-jitsu? So I've been doing martial arts ever since I was six years old. Okay. And then the dudes that I was doing martial arts with, it's actually a funny story. Um, like the national tournament for my karate style was uh, in, my, <clears throat> in my city, like close to my town. And we all did it. And my buddy, who was an older guy, did the master's division. And I was like, you pussy, you, you died, you know, <laughs> you're there by like a month, like, come on. And, um, actually I'm trying to take the word pussy out of it because it's testicles that are way weaker, actually. You know, like if you, if you, if you flick mine, I cry like a little baby, That's you know, true. anyway, that is, that is true. I never thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. You you're know, being a test- you're being a, a, testicle. Being a testicle, you know, <laughs> it doesn't, come up, doesn't roll off the tongue as easy. Though. It just doesn't sound as good. Right. It just, oh, you know, geez. it just doesn't sound as good, but it's a little more accurate. Um, <clears throat> anyway. Some uh, some some woman is like going yes like yeah. to the testicle part. <laughs> yeah, it's true so, though. Anyway, it's true, but right, like you can't touch ours because if you touch ours, we're in fucking trouble. Um, <laughs> and I, I have, I mean, virgin here. I have, I have, I have a student, a girl. She's very good. Uh, she will literally just put her foot right on another girl's vagina if she needs to get out of a move and does not care. Uh-huh. And the girl like doesn't flinch like we would. We'd be like, oh my god, yeah. you know. So. Right, and with, with guys, if a guy did that, that would be bad for. Oh yeah, yeah, no, like, you know, dude. You yeah, know? if it was intentional, yeah, yeah, you could, you can't do it, and the girls do it to each other all the fucking time. They don't care. So, um, women are a bit tougher than men, I think. I think they are too. They, <laughs> oh, they I birth, know. They birth babies like we would cry. Are you kidding my, me? My wife gave birth with with no medication. She's like, I'm gonna do it. I was like, All right, you're crazy. But yeah, she you're did. Crazy. It. Why? I was like, I, yeah. She didn't. Right. She didn't want the baby to have any med. med- I don't know. She, I was like, Do you, <laughs> what, you're yeah. fine. I'm here yeah, for support. Yeah, no, for sure. You can't argue with it. No, it's your thing. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> um. So anyway, he dodged the division. And he was like, yeah, you, you think so? Why don't you come to my house next Friday? And I was like, oh, cool. Fuck yeah, I'll beat you up then. So because, uh, you, you know, you spar all the time in karate, right? Like you don't even hit each other. And... <laughs> You, I, I go and I had no clue he was doing this jiu-jitsu stuff and it was like 1997, 98, mm-hmm. somewhere in there and I was like, oh my god and that's where my journey kind of started you know, okay. so and then not too not too consistent though because there was no schools where I lived yeah. like the closest school was an hour away I was still in high school uh, yeah, and you know when I moved to Colorado in 98 that's when, it, 99, that's when it really started Okay, I'm always curious about that, like, because for for the most part, you talk to anyone that started training either in like the the 90s or like the early 2000s, and most people got their, their, like when they say their very first quote gym, it was usually like, like there's, I had a buddy of mine, his gym was like mats that they laid down on a racquetball court, Um, you know, one place, like I trained in a, like a, a weightlifting gym, and there was a corner in the side of the place where we would put our mats down in between like the benches and, and all the weights and people would just like gawk at us. Like what the hell yes. are these guys doing? What was um like, was your first ju- like gym that you started actually training at where there was some consistency? Was it actually like a gym, like a jujitsu gym <clears throat> dedicated or was it kind of like a thing like that where it was uh, multiple different things? So my teacher, Amal Easton, mm-hmm. um, he was teaching. I-, I met him in a mall actually. Um, and mall he, in a mall. Mall in a mall, yeah. So I, and he was teaching out of a karate school. Okay. Right? So where we got, I don't know, 8 o'clock at night, whenever it was, right? After the karate was done being taught. Uh, so I did that for like two or three months. And then, you know, uh, I ran out of money and I broke my nose. I got hit in the nose. But I would really say that's not the truth. I got my first real girlfriend. Mm, right? So, yep. you know. Um, it happens. It's happened to almost yes. everyone. So. <laughs> But then a year later, uh, she broke up with me, so I was sad. Yeah. And I had heard that he opened his own place. He had just opened his own place. And I went down there. I still had no money. My nose wasn't broken anymore. Um, and I was like, yo, uh, I got no money still, but I can clean. And he was like, it's your lucky day, kid. Cleaner just quit two hours ago. Dang. That's perfect. And now awesome. I own with him. Now we're business <laughs> partners, right? So you can literally go from cleaner to owner. It's possible. Make it happen. That's pretty cool. What was, uh, you know, jujitsu for you, like in in martial arts in general, (laughs) starting out, like you started at six years old. What was your, what was your desire to do martial arts as opposed to, or I don't know if you played other sports or anything like that. What was your desire to kind of stick with that? And then, 
you know, finding jujitsu, which kind of most people have that, that it, like hit in the face with it, like it's so effective and then going to MMA and then fighting and fighting on the highest level. Tell me about that whole process where you yeah. kind of, did you even envision it going that way? All right. So you just, you just, are you guys ready to go a little deep here? And Let's get deep. Let's, let's go on some tangents. Yeah, bro. So here we go. I started because I saw the karate kid. Simple. Kick okay. the lamp. My parents put me in karate. Next, <laughs> you know, next 12, 15 years of my life. There it goes. Right. Karate. But I have a black dad and I have a white Jewish mother whose parents survived the Holocaust. And this is who I grew up with, these wow. people. And you got to remember, you got to rewind 40, 40 some years now, right? Like 1980, yeah. the shit wasn't so kosher, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> when the, the, when we, I, we moved when I was eight years old to a neighborhood and my house was vandalized constantly, swastikas and Nigers. You know, the first time Nigers after that, they got it right. Uh, and I just go home, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. so this was my experience. I had no friends, you know? Um, I was very, very unaccepted. Um, uh, my sister was, and this was a constant, uh, I could play outside with people, but I wasn't allowed in their houses, things like that. So this was the, whatever, it's my perspective, right? Um, my grandparents, uh, the atrocities of the Holocaust for them were, were, they never go away, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that doesn't leave you. The fear of what is to come. Uh, my dad grew up. So if, if you rewind, if I'm born in 80, how old my dad is? My dad grew up in the middle of civil rights now, right? Mm -hmm. Where he couldn't use the same water fountains and the, you know, where literally people were, my dad never went trick or treating in his whole life because it was dangerous. So uh, that's, that's my experience. Uh, life was dangerous. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. and then it came true with people doing this to our house, like, and, and no friends and all of this. Now the fighting thing. And so after my friend showed me a little jujitsu that summer, I go back to high school. I lose a little baby fat. I'm a late bloomer. You know, I, didn't, I wasn't really helping myself with the no friends thing. Uh, I was definitely a little chunky and hadn't matured yet physically up until uh, this point. And I was asking all the best looking chicks out and they were like, get the fuck away from me. You know, so, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I go back after I learned a little jujitsu and I'm talking about it and some of the state champs, we had two state champions in our high school. They heard about it and they were like, yo, let's, let's see what this is up. You're, you're, we're gonna beat the fuck out of you on the mat. And they did not. And people, I beat the fuck out of them. And then people heard about it. So then I got some friends. Right, people started to like me, and I was like, "Holy shit! Okay, this is the ticket, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. This is the ticket. I'm gonna fight in the UFC." What? And that was in that was in '98, '97. So yeah, you so know, UFC was still kind of yeah, no one knew was, what the fuck it was. It was kind like, of underground. At that point, still. it was underground. It wasn't even on TV. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't even, on, yeah. but your, people had heard about it. Yeah, they right. heard about that thing where the guys fight in the cage, and I and I technically just did it to them. Mm. Right. So now I'm like, you know, a, another girl made out with me and I was like, oh, or my first girl made out with me. And, and like I had friends and like, like three now instead of zero like that. Yeah. That's a big uptick, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like uh, you <clears throat> talk to guys like when they're, you know, younger and like why they learn to play music. It starts mm -hmm. off just because, you know, to have, mm -hmm. like, have a girlfriend, right? Like you learn yeah. how to fight. You're like, okay, like this is positive reinforcement here. I've yeah. got friends. I've got a girl now. Like things are good. I just, I, as a guy, I just beat up this other guy. Like you got and, pretty much everything going there. And for me, it came down to safety, really. And sure. that, that's like a very, mm, something that I really had to deal with a lot in my life is like this idea of am I safe? Mm -hmm. Because I was told I wasn't safe. Our house got vandalized all the time. I had no friends, you know, uh, so, so I was not safe. What kind of like, like, what kind of area did you grow up in? Like, like when this was going on? Because for me, like, I grew up in sort of, I guess you'd say, like a rougher part of town, mm -hmm. and um, we were all just like, I mean, everything was so intermixed. Like, I mean, I had, you had like, you know, we had Hispanics, we had Black Americans, and White Americans. We we're all just mixed around, and like nobody really cared. Like, I because I remember like as I got older, <laughs> I really never saw any of this because I never, I never knew it existed because right. like we were all just together. Like we would be having cookouts together because it's our neighbors, right? So like it was like what kind of areas was this going on in? There were no, I mean, look, there was Black kids that went to my high school, and there was sure. you know, and, and and Hispanics that went to my high school. Uh -huh. I I can't. My dad was the only black dude, like full black, right? Uh -huh. 
that I knew of anywhere around us. Oh, wow. Like I, I couldn't, you know, within five miles, let's say, I couldn't have gone to another black person's house. Okay. Right? Uh, gotcha. Then you add the Jew part in, right? Where, uh, and then you mix it, right? Yeah. So even with, let's say, other black kids, I, I was not, I wasn't black all the way. Mm-hmm. Right? And I, so, and I wasn't uh, Jewish all the way. So you're just like stuck in limbo. I have nothing, right? There's mm. there's not a single person like me, just my sister. Mm. Which which is what we are all really looking for is community. Yeah. Right. And for me, that's you know, if you're gonna ask me the reason for our schools now, like you know, post career and all of that, it's so that no one ever has to feel like me. Yeah. Right? So that wherever I don't I don't care like uh gay, black, straight, you know, uh that's police officer not police officer i I don't give a fuck man there's there's one rule be good Mm -hmm. be good treat somebody else well and and come in and 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 give to the community everybody me included right me included i have to give to the community i can't just i can't be taking and it's not their privilege that they're learning from me because i accomplished whatever the fuck it is that doesn't even really matter right you know we we all live together in that in these building in this building and we, we better be helping each other. Well, that's kind of the cool thing about jujitsu. A lot of times is when people mm-hmm. come in, you kind of when you come in the doors. At least, I mean, I'm sure it is from the way that you speak, the way it is with 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 me and my guys. You get basically a clean slate. Like whoever you come in, it really does not matter who you are when you come in. All that matters is when you step through the door. Like, who do you show yourself to be when you're on the mats? Mm-hmm. You know, who are you there when you're with your teammates? When you go to competitions? When you're doing all these different things with them? Like, who are you? You know, as a, as that person, you right. know what I mean. Like, I don't care about like you, your job, your career, any of that kind of stuff. Like, I'm worried. Like, how do you treat your teammates? Do you train hard? Do you take care of them? All these things. And are you showing up right? Because sure. that you know that's you know whenever <clears throat> you know I just had a girl in the nogi pants. And I told everybody, the girl I was talking about earlier, and I told everybody like, hey, look, uh, you all won the Nogi Pants because, you know, like, look, she's, she, yeah, sure, she went and won. But how do you think we get better? How do you think we figure out what works and what doesn't work? Mm-hmm. Like, all, you know, so like I, I, I need you as much as you need me and she needs you just as much, you know, like we, we are in this full on together because I can't just like be like, oh, I think this works. You go do it. Right. We have to test. We have to be in the lab and we have to test. And look, if you're 50 and training, I test differently, but you're Mm -hmm. still part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, sure, I'll never smash your face if you're 50. You know, I don't want anybody to smash my face anymore. I'm, you know, I'm I'm past those days. If, (laughs) right, you know, like, oh, uh, there you go, buddy. I'll, I'll try to get out of the choke. I do not want my face smashed. Right. Like, we'll, we'll see what happens, but we still have to test. And we need everyone, the white belts, the black belts, and everyone in between to test. And look, that's just the competition side of it. And, and the competition side of it, I mean, it greatly matters, but it doesn't really matter. All in the same. But I mean, <clears throat> even, even on a day-to-day basis, I mean, I feel like even the people that don't compete, I mean, obviously they're a part of it because they help make everyone else around them better. But even then, there's always challenges on a day-to-day basis where, you know, again, you kind of get to see what you're made of and, you know, what you have within you when you're on the mats. Yeah, the, the the purpose of jiu-jitsu is to make us all anti-fragile, right? Like mm-hmm. to be as anti-fragile as possible so that whatever happens to us, it doesn't matter, right? Like we take that and we make it and we make ourselves stronger. So in the bigger scheme of things, like get away from the competition. Um, that's, I mean, it's the most beautiful thing in the world to do that because you don't know what's going to come your way today. Uh, you get to make a mess of it most of the time. And then you get to go figure out and see how it is you handle your mess. Like, you know, for example, we were talking earlier, COVID. Who who can control any of it? None of it, right? How did you how did how do we handle it? You know? Mm-hmm. Did you handle it skillfully? Did you handle it unskillfully? Did you, you know, and there's a there's a whole host of things that you could have done. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, yeah, who who is ready, who was ready for, you know, March thirteenth of twenty twenty? None none of us. But jujitsu taught us to be ready. Right, mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu taught us how to take what we are given and this and, and deal with the situation that we are in, my perspective. How do you think you cultivate that, you know, that environment? Um, I think a lot for, for our gym, I think Chewy, you know, kind of leads from the front in a lot of ways. <clears throat> Your gym, that community, you know, having everyone kind of 
giving back to each other. Mm -hmm. How do you cultivate that? And also, you know, you have a lot of gyms around the area yeah. in various areas. How do you spread that message, spread that environment to other areas to where it's consistent, you know, along all those areas? It's a lot of work, you know, as far as like the now with seven schools, it's a lot of fucking work. Um, but how do you start? You start with like what you just said, like cho choose the leader, you know, I'm the leader. I show up every day like it's my privilege that anybody would actually show up to take a class with me. And if that's the case, right, if it's my privilege that 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 white belt student Dan over there would come to my class, well, then I better make sure that he has the best hour possible. So I, I have to teach the class in a way that he can really feel that I give a rat's ass, you know, that I really, really care. And you have to do that all the time. And if you can't do that, then uh, take the day off. And if you have to take too many days off, this isn't for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would say take too many days off. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't really take, <clears throat> I don't take days off. Like I, I don't, I don't not teach because I'm tired. Mm -hmm. like, I, like I'm not going to teach tomorrow because I have to go to Vegas for fights, you know, but uh, I, I would rather be nowhere else than on the mat. So mm -hmm. Like, if, yeah. and if that's not your thing, that's cool. It's just not for you. What was it about teaching? Uh, you started like fairly early on teaching, right? What was your desire? And it's kind of something you started with something now you're doing full time. You had the MMA career kind of in between, mm -hmm. which, you know, a lot of times is the case, but what, what is it about teaching that really gives you something special? Like is really important to you. That's a great question. Um, I did this thing, uh, where with a lady and it's called the dig. And it's what it's, she finds one word that you're about. And my word is power. You know, mm -hmm. I love to actualize mine. And I love, I, I really love to be the Obi Wan Kenobi of someone else's journey into theirs. You know, mm -hmm. I fucking love it, man. I, I like, I don't know. It, it just touches me. It just, excuse me. I think, I think it's because my martial arts teachers, uh, I had a karate teacher, Mike Garaguso and Amal, so shifted, so shifted my life uh, that I, I, I can't, I, I can't see a better way to do it. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I, I kind of resonate with that because, you know, like you and in, in some situation, I came into, I got into wrestling and then in jujitsu, right. I was like the, the fat nerdy kid who, you know, didn't have a lot of friends, didn't have a lot of confidence. I got beat up really bad when I was in seventh grade by some like kind of old like, kids, 16, 18 year olds and stuff. And I remember as I started to get into wrestling and get into jujitsu, all of a sudden I had a group that I belonged to. I started to get more confident in myself. And then it sort of it's sort of led down and made this ripple effect into all kinds of other positive areas of my life. And so it's the same thing. I love seeing that and knowing like, especially when you see it, because you'll see it, you'll see this young kid come in and you'll see them coming in from like a crouch sort of unconfident position posture to all of a sudden they're walking with their chest up <clears throat> you see them do something or, you know, you see their life change and you know, you had a role to play in it. And I feel like it, to know that I got to do the same thing that my coaches did for me. Like that's, that's awesome. It, we are just in this together this <clears throat> this world thing right like we we are very very similar we are not very different stop listening to the media turn that shit off <laughs> yeah. you know turn it off please turn it off go to somewhere where people actually do hard things together and you will see how similar you are to everyone else in the world you know um so after that, God, with the ability to help someone achieve, what else, what else is better than that? Like that, that's like with, you know, with kids that that's, what's so amazing watching your kids grow that, that, that's what fills your heart up. You know, right? you know you're like, God damn, you know, they couldn't even, sh they couldn't like, you know, but that's why we worry about them so much at the same time because they couldn't wipe their ass. And now <laughs> Like here I am over here and my dad, you know, 40 years ago was wiping my ass and now I'm taking care of my own kids and he's still scared for me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so like we are really in this together. So if you treat everyone in some way like your child, let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. not that they're a child, right? I'm not calling another grown adult a fucking child, you know, but if they treat, if, if I care about them like they're my child, sure. you know? 
yeah, genuine like that, like you genuinely care. Yeah, you know, genuinely. You generally go out of your way, like to like, hey, how are you doing today? Yeah, you're not just here showing up, paying paying gym dues, and then going doing your thing. You're there, like you're on the mats with them. You're you're interacting. You're asking a lot. Some of our <clears throat> some of my favorite times at our gym is usually on Saturdays after a tough training session. We're just sitting around bullshitting and we're just like having a good conversation everybody's really relaxed kind of you you've exerted that energy you kind of feel really calm and you have some great conversations we joke around we have some good conversations some of my favorite times definitely my favorite times you know my my favorite times are just on the mats with people and you know even when you take it to like competing I so rarely remember the actual fights or matches, but I definitely remember the times like when, when the, the shit that happened, you know, and, and like during during the week, during the couple of days, during the weekend, I, I remember that way more than I remember uh, how I set up that Uma Plata. Mm, right. What do you think it is about, like, because you, you were saying that, like, you know, again, same thing. Sometimes I, I have a um, a bit of a bias when I view things because – I'm in a place every single day where people come in of different walks of life, races, religions, everything else. And we're all like, cool. Like we don't like, we're not trying to cut each other down. We're not talking about anything else. We're just like, we're all in there together. Yeah. What is it about jujitsu and things like that? Where you're doing something tough. That's kind of like to, the way that I always word it is it cuts through the bullshit. You know, like we, we cuts through all like the little small things that we try to divide ourselves or the things that we're told to and conditioned to divide ourselves, you know, with, and it cuts through all that. And then you're just like, we're just here. We're all in this together. Like, what is it about those things that you think does that? You know, so we've been talking a lot about what jiu-jitsu does to bring us together, and, and I'll answer your question in a second. Sure. I do think there's major things that do divide us, and, and we allow them to divide us. It's our own fault, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, what jiu-jitsu does to cut them, to break them, is you need the other person. Mm -hmm. You can't get good by yourself. Nobody mm -hmm. can. Right. Right? So I need you to get good at jiu-jitsu, and I need as many people as possible. So if, if, I, if I have a school of two people, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not enough for me to get good. It's if I have a school of 10, we're getting that, you know, okay. But the more people, the better we all get. So we, we greatly need each other. And, and when you're in a community where you need each other, then now we're talking, mm -hmm. right? Not we need you need if you want to get good at Jiu Jitsu, you need like it's, it's a definite need. And uh, that's what does it. You know, uh, I read this book, you know, and I'll, it's a little foo-foo-y here to start. It's called Nonviolent Communication. And uh, it literally every come, everything comes down to feelings and needs. Now, I know, I know we're all rolling our eyes. Trust me, me too, when I heard feelings. You know, I was like, man, <laughs> fuck your feelings. I was like, you know, I almost shut the book after the first But that's chapter. just everybody. Everybody right. goes off of emotion and feelings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're having a feeling right now. That's but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. But that, but. I almost closed the book and then I was like, I'm going to give it five more minutes. <laughs> okay. You know? <laughs> and then in the very next chapter, he was like, your feelings are a hundred percent on you. And I was like, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to keep reading, you know? And what it really gets down to is you have a feel, you feel a certain way because you have a need, like a human need that's not getting met. And as humans, we have to meet our needs. Right? So take that to jujitsu. You need other people to get good. That's why it cuts through all of the bullshit. Mm -hmm. And I think some of our, some of our, you know, as far as having more people on the mat, the, the uniqueness or the differences like in body types, in, in backgrounds, even, you know, the, all that stuff makes you better. You, know, mm -hmm. you, need, you can't have everybody that exact looks exactly the same, trains exactly the same. You're, you're never going to learn, evolve your game. Everything's going to be just the same type of game. And you can see that with the internet, right? The internet blew up the world because you got to see all of these different games by different people, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Like, so before you had to like go experience, you know, like you had to go to that person mm -hmm. to see that style or learn that style. Now, like the internet changed the fucking world with, with everything, but especially like look at jujitsu. Jujitsu has, martial arts in general has skyrocketed. Yeah. What are some of the things? Because I, you know, I, I watch matches and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Obviously, and compete still. What are some of the things that you've noticed, um, both you know, with fighting in the UFC and like with jujitsu that you maybe you noticed, um, like some of the differences. Like for instance, with me, just recently, like just this past weekend, we went to a competition, and in these white belt divisions, 
like I'm watching these young guys, including some of my students, play things like shooting in for single X <clears> and <throat> playing butterfly guard and, and stuff like like positions that back in the day used to be quote unquote advanced. Right now they're now they're just like run of the mill stuff, right. right? It's just very right. normal. What are some of the things that you've you've noticed? I guess with the and it doesn't necessarily have to be technical, but some of the, the things that have changed in the jiu-jitsu community with the sort of advent of the internet sort of just being able to spread the information out so quickly. From a broad perspective, macro, offense better, defense worse. Mm. You know? Uh, you try, like, the, the offense is, like, so immaculate, right? Like like you're saying, people are playing all these different games, uh, but their defense is worse because they don't spend any time playing defense. You know, they just tap because mm. they get their guard passed and like, I want to work on my Baron Bolo as a white belt, mm. uh, which I disagree <laughs> with, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you need, you need to, uh, cause as a white belt, you don't really care, right? I'll tap, but whatever, fuck it. You know, like you tap all the time. You're supposed to and all that. But as we go up the ranks, um, you start to care. Like your ego gets in the way just regardless. And, the, and if you're competing, you for sure care. If your defense sucks, you uh, you won't try all this great offense that you have because it could go wrong. And then when it goes wrong, you don't know what to do. You you every time somebody passes your guard, you're like, oh fuck, I'm in side control. I don't know how to get a side control. Uh, but and downhill it goes, mm. right? <clears throat> but if your defense is good, then you should definitely you don't care. You'll fucking throw throw the kitchen sink at everybody because you're like, nope, I'm gonna get out of whatever. I'm gonna deal with whatever you send back my way. Mm -hmm. um, so. That's in a macro sense, but the offense is way better. Like if you get wrapped up, if, if there's a white belt and he's got good if, and you get wrapped up in their fucking offense, oh God, sometimes it's a nightmare to get out of, mm -hmm. right? It's a fucking nightmare, even for like me and you, right? True. Like we're black belts, but God damn, some of that, you know, you're like, God, ah, damn it. <laughs> you know, All right, I got to deal with this bullshit for a minute here. <laughs> um, uh, as far as MMA, if you want to look at like MMA, like so, like the overall level is way higher. Mm -hmm. um, jiu Jitsu as well. MMA, look, uh, I would say the biggest change is there's no such thing as orthodox and uh, south and southpaw fighters anymore. Mm. You have to be able to do both, mm. right? Like if you watch the top, the top of the food chain, minus heavyweight, you know, minus like the heavier weights a little bit, but everyone goes both. Like there's all kinds of switching going on. So and I think people just learn like the the curve went up. You could learn way more. You could your your instructor didn't keep you pigeonholed in one spot yeah. because there was so much information. Here's a question then. Uh for say let's say someone's listening to this and they're like, yeah. Man, okay, so I want to get my defense better, but mm -hmm. obviously they most people don't have control of their uh, of the rolling situation so let's say that someone's going into a class and the coach is like all right guys we're gonna put the timer on we're gonna do some full full rolls we're just gonna roll till submission what's something that someone could do to um if they know that they have a defensive problem could do to work on that so i'm i'm personally doing it right now but i'm working uh in a very terrible sense not terrible but like i tap a lot because i'm working in full locked out submissions or chokes okay and escaping I'm not allowed to go offense until I escape. Mm. So like you get my arm and I'm not talking defending the arm bar from there. I'm talking letting it go. The triangle all, all the way locked and then seeing if I can get out. Now, look, you got to back that up to your level, <laughs> 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 right? Like Everyone. I've been doing jujitsu for quite a long time and I'm, I, you know, uh, I'm not fucking around with heel hooks like that. I'm too old. You know, I can, and I'm not competing at, like I was. So uh, I I fuck around with it a little bit, but there's a point where I I'm like, uh, uh, I, I, it's not the it's not worth it for me. But uh, you you just back that up. You have to limit. You have to go on a diet, and I don't care what you're working on. You have to go on a diet. You only get to do certain things, right? Like for a really long time until you have them. Like my armbar defense is getting solid right now, really fucking solid. Like, b because like, uh, I'm like two months in of first somebody gets my arm and then I'm allowed to train, but you can do the same thing with offense. I'm only allowed to triangle you. Yeah. Right. I'm only allowed to triangle you. And then when I can triangle everybody, okay, now we can move on. 
what's your process for like say you're in that locked out arm bar like what's your pro what, what are you Ooh. going through in your head like how are you starting to break it down like how are you <clears throat> problem solving you know obviously there's a lot of tapping going on but like mm -hmm. how are you figuring out when do you when do you notice like you're onto something versus not i mean is there well, i study process? a lot you know okay. i study a ton um uh the the torso leg for me has really been a key uh, if you're arm barring my right hand, I take my left hand and I push your torso leg down, you know? So if you're arm barring my right arm, that means your right leg is going across my torso. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I push it down. And when I push it down, you don't have a good fulcrum, right? To, to break my arm with, I can raise my shoulder up very high, you know, high enough. And literally my arm rotates through. It doesn't break. Mm -hmm. Like it gets, it, it straightens. But I can take it here, and I can take it. I can take it thumb towards the head and thumb down towards the le the feet. And as you're pulling on the arm, it does. My arm has not broken yet. <laughs> That's good there. And, and then you know, and then you get to like figure out: should I have? Should I be going thumb up hitchhiker, or should I be going thumb down, turn towards you, and pull the elbow through? Um, should I be pushing back over the top leg now? Like if. Because sometimes I'll, when I push the torso leg down, they'll force it back up towards my face. Mm -hmm. And when they force it back up towards my face, it's, it's, they force a little too much. And then I take both of their legs on the other side of my head. So, and then I can start to come out that way. Um, but that's been a huge key for me mm -hmm. with cool. really fucking locked tight arm bars. Yeah, I remember my coach when I was a purple belt, he did the same thing to me where um, I got caught in a triangle at a competition. And so for afterwards, like it didn't matter what like position we were working in. Mm -hmm. I always started it in, in like a, almost like a fully sunk in like triangle. You know, basically I, I was like one movement away from being choked out. And every single day, every roll for like a month, I was stuck in that position. I remember yeah. my, it, it took a few weeks where like by the end of it, I was finally able to like to, to survive much better and escape. But then what happened is afterwards, like for years afterwards, like I didn't get caught in triangles because every time someone got me to a triangle, I was already <clears> used to getting out of them. Didn't and, matter. Uh, you're just you're so much more relaxed in the position because you, like you said, with the defensive part, you know deep down you're like, I got this, I'm good. And I remember even like feeling the triangle lock up them. Like one time I was in a competition, got locked up, and I instantly had this moment where I was like, Oh yeah, you, this doesn't feel anything like so and so's triangle at the gym. I've got this, and I'll break out of it and everything mm. else. You have that confidence from it, and it's it's freedom. It's true freedom. Right, like what were the only the only fear fear is an illusion, mm -hmm. you know. It's like the the boogeyman when you're a kid under the bed, you know. Like you have kids. You guys have kids. I do. Yeah. Okay. If your kid says I'm scared about the monster under the bed, you go under the you say, "Come here, Johnny. Look under the bed. No monster. It's the first thing we all do mm -hmm. as parents, right? You show them that what the fear is an illusion. Okay." It's the same thing with with the triangle. It's the fear. The triangle's real. Monsters might be real. There's bad people in the world, you know, but that it's going to get you right now. Show them that it won't. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing with your jujitsu. Show yourself that you can handle all of the mess. And when you can handle all of the mess, it's the, there's no fe the fear goes away because you're just like, all right, I'll do whatever. Who fucking cares? Mm -hmm. You know, I have like my girl, my my student right now who who won the pants. She was like, uh, she did well, but she didn't do as well as she wanted. You know, uh, and this is what I like out of champions, right? Like that was not good enough. <laughs> so, and I was like, what do you want? She's like, I want I want to finish more people. And I was like, mm -hmm. and she's stupid smart, like stupid smart. She's twenty. She's about to be twenty one. She already has four degrees. You know, like so she's like that, right? Like just stupidly smart. Where, but she, but her intelligence halts her because she logics it right. Well, this this boom boom this, this uh, and then okay, I do nothing, mm. right? So I'm like, all right, we have to, we have to. I'm not going to ask you to not do the whole logic thing because you won't. You're this is who you are a little bit. Let's just logic it a different way. You can do whatever it is you. Want. I need you to just literally fuck everything up in this school. Chase all of the submissions right now. Chase them all so that you can see that your defense holds up. And when mm -hmm. your defense holds up, and then we'll start to chase everything and not give points away. Right? And and now we're now we're now we're talking. Now she'll now the logic will say to go chase everything when she competes. 
So <clears throat> cha- changing gears up a little bit, yeah. I want to I want to know what it was like. Um, tell me about the experience or some of the things that maybe uh, the overall experience of what it was like being on Tough. Oh, I hated it uh, because it, it, from what I've <laughs> like, from, I don't know because I, again I wasn't on, but I remember reading something I thought, and oh. I felt like they said that they basically you couldn't. You couldn't read. You couldn't listen to music. Like you couldn't basically do. Like you couldn't really do anything other than train. And then they gave you. you Obviously, you saw the show. They always give everyone a full liquor cabinet, which is a great idea. Entertainment, Um, right? But like, I mean, was that like true? You 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 couldn't read nothing. Like nothing, nothing. dude. I look. I'm not religious at all. And I asked to bring the Bible. Yeah. Because I was like, they're not gonna let me bring any other book, right? There's no way they're letting me bring it. I was like, (laughs) can I bring the Bible? And I'll read the fucking Bible. And they were like, no. I'm like, you're persecuting me against my religious freedoms. They're like, <laughs> and they were like, so don't do the fucking show. We're not making you. Man. I was like, fuck. What did right. you do? But did you drink a lot? Did you? No, nah, man, do? you go crazy, bro. By the end of the show, everyone's either drinking themselves to sleep, taking sleeping pills over the counter or prescription. This shit's brutal, man. Like, it's literally a fucking science experiment. O- other than like. What I like in 2016, I, uh, you know, I had this like mental breakdown, slash spiritual awakening. Like I didn't get hospitalized or anything, but you know, just a tough time in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, it was the worst six weeks of my fucking life. I hated it, hated it. Every, it if uh, if you don't live in your mom's basement, it sucks. Do you, do you have anything positive? Like any? No. Like, yeah, it got me in the UFC. Yeah, it got me in the fucking UFC. That's it. What about during the time? Is there anything you can think of, no. like any moment that you shared laughs? Okay, I got like really good at half guard because I wasn't on Nog's team, but he was always training when we walked in. So I got to watch him and how he played his half guard. Mm. And so I, I got good at half guard. Okay. Huh. And did you <laughs> and did you go into the uh the, the whole experience like thinking like, all right, man, this is gonna be awesome? Like like my we- my experience started bad from the fucking jump, bro. So uh I cut weight in a bathtub. Okay, that's how you would cut weight. Uh, so my, ho- uh, I just asked for a scale in my hotel room because you're in the first, you fight to get on the show. Did you guys do you like know? an Epsom salt bath or something in the bathroom? Yeah, bath no, yep, okay. exactly. Okay. So I f- you fight to get on the show. So you're in a hotel. You're not even in the house yet. You know, they never brought a scale to me. Huh. So I'm cutting weight. You can't miss. You don't get two hours. If you miss, you're out. So for a 206 pound, right, because light heavyweight, I weighed in at 197 pounds. That's oh, how much shit. extra weight I cut. That's terrible. That's fucking terrible. That's awful. Awful. Whoa. Yeah. I cut eight, nine extra pounds. Okay. So you can imagine how I felt. Mm. Like, and you're not recovering from that, right? No. I go and I do the fight in the house. I beat fight to get in the house. I beat the fucking brakes off of him in the first two rounds, but it's the whole thing two rounds. And then if you need to go the extra round, right? Right. They say we're going to a next round. In the next round, I was mounted on him for three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. Credit to this fucking kid. He was tough as hell nails. I was fucking way weak, right? But his orbital in the third round, face rearranged, arm broken, orbital broken, blood fucking everywhere. Three and a half minutes of the mount in a fight, right? They raised his hand. Oh. And we're only judging the third round now, right? Because that's the only round that matters. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. What happened? Like, who's watching this? He was the producer of the show, Craig Pelagian's homeboy. Mm. And they're not sanctioned fights. They're sanctioned, but they don't don't go on your record. So Craig's like, no, he's got, if he doesn't get stopped, he's getting in the house. That's crazy. But you ended up getting in the house. Yeah, he couldn't fucking fight, man. I broke his arm and broke his face. (laughs) <laughs> what a mess man uh, so that was my first day that was uh, second day that's a hell of a you know? start yeah yeah so i'm like this bullshit you know so you already had a sour taste in your mouth going into it well you're i mean already- i got in so i was pretty happy I, I mean like dude when that fight ended i was like yo what what the f- dana <laughs> yeah like that that was a win <laughs> like that's not like i did not lose I mean, even if you wanted to make an argument for I lost one of the first two rounds, go the fuck ahead. But you don't lose a fight mounted on somebody for three and a half minutes. So how's your confidence going in? I mean, you're in there like with the, you know, really the best guys in your division that they're up and comers, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how was your confidence? How did you handle, you know, 
being confident, you know, feeling yeah. like you're, you're, you're was, there, you belong there and kind of you're, you're no, there to do a, do a thing. I was a very, very mentally weak individual for my entire fight career. Cause I was fighting for all the wrong reasons, right? I was fighting. You gotta, we gotta go back to the story I was telling earlier. I was fighting for like friends and safety and security. So people would like me and accept me. Mm. Right. So, uh, my reasons for fighting were not great, <laughs> right? Like, so there was a lot weighing on all of this for me. It wasn't just a fight and money and fame and titles. It was like uh, safety and security and friendship and, and all of that in the world because that was how I got it at 18 years old. So that never really left me until I went through this period of my life where I, I had to ask, you know, some some really tough questions about who is Elliot and stuff like that, you know. And, and what does it mean? And, and what, what, why am I here? What am I doing with my life? And this was all post fight career. I act, and, you know, and, uh, as I came back, you know, after 2016, I competed in jujitsu again and I had my biggest wins, you know, like, and I, and I, and I did okay before that. Right. I, uh, I was the, I was the first, pan, I was the first American to win the pans at, at blue, purple and brown. Uh, mm -hmm. One Grapples Quest, I don't know, 10 times. Then Grapples Quest was the tournament back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I like in a third at Mundial's and, you know, made it to the UFC and, and all that stuff. But uh, it was uh, when I came through the my my time in 2016, I beat some actual world champs. You know, I, I, got, I, I got into ADCC at 40. So uh almost 40 so mm -hmm. you know uh which wouldn't have happened before you know it wouldn't have happened because uh my mind wasn't strong enough to to handle these uh the intensity of of high level combat could you talk about 2016 what happened like what, yeah. what yeah, happened kind of and what yeah, for um, sure how you came uh, out of that so the, the you know uh if you want the really detailed story, like I, I wrote it all, like I wrote a book about it, right? The Gospel of Fire. So boom, I mean, long story. What happened was my life was great. <laughs> you know, schools, I retired in 11, built the schools, four of them at the time or three of them, I don't remember. Life was great, successful. Come back from a vacation on Maui, what should have been a little jet lag turned into massive anxiety. And I had anxiety my whole life, you know? But this was just massive and super acute. No sleep, five days. May, maybe six hours total throughout those five days. Just up, panicking, panic attack after panic attack, uh, pacing my house. Uh, and at the end of that five days, I, I called my friend who's my doctor as well, you know, and and this is this is where I say I'm the luckiest dude alive, you know. Um, this is part of it, like uh, – First of all, that I've had the luck in my life to work really hard, to be able to work really hard and be successful. You know, that 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 initial spark was luck, is luck to me. Um, and then two, in this really, really bad time, in this really, really acute anxiety, it was a Friday night. My my friend, one of my best friends is my doctor, you know, and he, he answers the phone and he starts taking care of me right away, like immediately. Um, he's like, we got to get you some, we got to get you some sleep first of all. So I got some sleeping pills and some Xanax. Uh, you need to take a longer term anxiety med to leave. Obviously, you know, cause he and I've been dealing with this since I was 18 years old. And, uh, he's like, look, man, it, it doesn't have to be this intense. It, it just really doesn't. So, uh, so we, we started that. I got into therapy right away. I, I had the financial means to go to therapy twice a week, uh, during that time. Uh, I still go once a uh, uh, pandemic things changed a little bit. Right. So I go once every two weeks now because it's virtual. Um, but yeah, you know, and uh, that, that lasted about nine months, you know, that lasted about nine months and I had to get rid of this uh, showing people how great I was and that's why they will accept me. And I had to turn it into, uh, I had, this is where I made the shift, I would say, to realizing that making making somebody else great is is really, and whatever that great is, it doesn't have to be a jujitsu. You know, it could be at you know, obviously my vehicle is jujitsu. You have like you know, you come to the school. Now, 
I, I feel just as accomplished for, you know, my fighter this weekend that I'm about to have, the girl that won the Pan Ams, as I do this dude who came from absolutely nothing, joined the school, and and because of what we were able to help him do, uh, he owns his own business now, you know, and and he is like, dude, you got like, and when he when he opened his business, he you know. He, he got it going. When he made a hat, he came and gave me the fucking hat to his business. He's like, I, I need you to have this, you know? And like, that was his gold medal, right? Like he's not going to be a champion and that's cool, but he actually is. This was, this was his world title right here. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so that's when I made this shift in my life that man, it is literally about, uh, what you can do for other people. How can, how can I serve you? You know, and, and what it is. And now look that, you know, it's, it's not always easy, right? I, I'm not soft. I'm not easy to work with all the time. Uh, as far as like in a, in a close sense, we're going to, we're, you know, I put a lot of pressure on people. I don't believe, um, I don't believe in microaggressions, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, uh, so it, it's it's an intense experience, but it is what I it is what I am here to do. So that was you know that was the cliff notes of two thousand like up. I mean when I was, I was up for a month straight, and my friends man, my friends would stay on the phone with me, and they would like talk to me. Sometimes they they it was all night long, and yes, this was with taking two prescription sleeping pills and a milligram of Xanax. Sometimes this is how bad the anxiety was. I could stay awake through that shit. Hmm. It was intense it was not fun (laughs) but it was the it was probably the greatest thing that's ever happened to me how did things change for you like as far as your jujitsu for example you said you kind of competed you did better than it's all the mind it's all the mind okay you 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 know who you are right like when you know i know exactly who i am what does it mean to be elliot i'm a father i'm a husband i'm a teacher i'm a student uh i'm a leader i'm a fighter and i'm a survivor okay so i am these and all of those things together make me enough the result of any particular event doesn't touch any of those things Mm. so like when you were competing before you felt like maybe there was a which i I I connect with this to some degree uh when i was younger you feel like you know the uh, the event that you're doing, the fight, the the jujitsu competition, the you know whatever it might be. If that fails, if that thing goes down, then who you are, right? Like when you were younger, probably obviously your own view of yourself would go down. Opposed mm-hmm. to now, when you lose or when something fails or when you know whatever happens, it just it's one of those things where it just is what it is. It's information. It, it has nothing to do with who you are, right? But it's just something you've done. Right. Right. And it's just become everything winning and losing, but winning doesn't fuck with me either. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause it's just information now. Okay. That was skillful. You know, I work with, uh, I work with a coach and he says there's benefits and drawbacks to every single thing in your life, right? The world must stay in balance. Now look, balance does not mean 50, 50 balance might be 95, five, mm-hmm. right? Like, <laughs> Uh, you don't drink as much alcohol as you do water. That that is not fucking balanced. Uh, you'll have a rough life with that, you know. <laughs> so uh, everything has benefits and drawbacks. So when you win, the benefits are so obvious. Find the drawbacks. When you lose, the drawbacks are so obvious. Find the benefits. You know. So everything now literally just becomes information. Like, what's the information that you can take from events? Because if they don't fuck with you, then you're just golden. What, like, the, like, nothing fucks with me. I, if I die, like, I'll be a father, right? Like, my I am's death, death doesn't fuck with it. The end of the universe doesn't fuck with it. I'm a teacher. Nothing fucks with it. I will always be someone's teacher. Somebody will always consider me their teacher. Maybe not now, but yo, who was your teacher? Okay, what's your journey look like? Oh, there's Elliot. Right. So that's just what it is. And you can't fuck with it. So if you can't fuck with it, let's go. What do you want to do? What do you want to try? What do you want to fail at? It makes me think of the idea that you spoke about earlier about defense. Yeah. Right. Like where if you're if your defense is so good that you know that you can literally get caught in anything and you'll be fine. It's the same thing where, you know, if you know who you are, who you are, like deep down, and you get down to that that nitty gritty, and you understand that nothing that happens, that nothing, uh, any of the little small stuff that you do, it doesn't touch that. Um, 
then that gives you, I think, especially in competition, because I've, I've been there too, where as I've gotten older and I've gotten a deeper sense of who I am, when I compete, like if I lose, it's like whatever. But because I'm not worried about losing, I mean, I'm trying to win 100%, of course. Of course. But because I'm not worried about losing and because I'm not worried about it like being constructing my ego, essentially, I'm able to go for a lot of stuff with much more aggression and much more um, just w- without any sort of worry or hesitation. And I've had some of my best matches because of that. Mm-hmm. Because again, just like the defense thing, I can go for the submission because I know I've got great defense. I know I can go for this and risk failure because I'm going to really go for something. And that's what always happens. Anytime you really go for something, there's always a risk of failure. You know you're okay because no matter what, like you'll still be you at the end of it, and it allows you to really go for something rather than being hesitant or in the back of your mind wondering, well, what if you know this happens, you know that kind of thing. But it just doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, you know it, who it, you are. I, like, you, re- you know it really you are doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, it really, really doesn't matter to me. I uh, and I, I, it's it's very it's very freeing. Mm-hmm right it's very freeing it allows you to take it away you know, what i okay i think the best example of what, what you were just talking about Chuchu, and what we're talking about here is there's a there's a scene where khabib is talking to dana white on the stool in between rounds okay you know it's before he's the champion mm-hmm. and he's like talking to dana about how he's got to give him the title shot next and dana goes dude you're in the middle of a fight you're in between rounds you could lose and literally khabib's response is loss doesn't matter i know who i am like literally that's what he says Mm -hmm. Mm. but that's why he was so free Mm -hmm. right that's why he was able to do what he did because it didn't fuck with him you know his his dad taught him who he was and he just goes out there and he and he performs it doesn't matter the winning and the losing doesn't matter that's why he turns down the fight with floyd right it's why he turns down the fight with gsp because the money that he'll get won't change him he already has enough money you know he, he, it doesn't fuck with him. Any money that I get now, look, it will be great. It, great please, I'm trying to make more. We all are, sure. you know, but it won't fuck with me. It's not going to like make me feel better about myself. Like who cares? Elliot, you know, we got to run brother. Yeah. Um, thank you for the time. Um, can you just let, let everyone know kind of where they can get a hold of you if they're interested in training yeah, at your gym sure. or kind of follow you on social media and then also uh, your book and kind of where they can get that. Yeah, so uh, the gym's Easton, E-A-S-T-O-N, Training Center. So Easton TC, uh, EastonTC.com. We actually just launched a, a very interesting program. You know, we have very we have seven very successful schools, uh, over, you know, over 4,000 members between all of them. Uh, we have launched a program to help. I know you have a lot of jujitsu school owners listening to you to help other school owners where we take you through a process of uh, exactly how, how we do what it is that we do. And we show you everything. Um, it is not expensive. You know, when I, I just actually got off the phone the, yesterday with some or last week with somebody and I told him and he was like, the, I gave him the price and he was like, I was paying four times this. This is what I was paying weekly. He's like, you need to charge more. I was like, no, I don't. I don't need to charge more. I'm not trying to get rich, right? I'm trying to make you help. I'm trying to make sure you do your school better. So if you need some help, that, that's easton.online. I would love, you can just hit me up on Instagram. Firemarshall205 is my Instagram. Um, easton.online is for any school owner that is looking for some help. We have courses. We have affiliate programs where we will meet every week. So um, that's a... Uh, I'm really, I'm really charging on that one because I, I think as we come through this pandemic, uh, we're seeing a lot of people come into our schools, right? Everyone that was like, I, I, sh- I was going to do it mm-hmm. before, right? And then I was going to do it next week. And then all of a sudden they took it away from us. You weren't allowed to do it. And now you, so you're seeing this massive rush. Um, mm-hmm. If you would like to keep those students, it is, uh, you have to have some skillful actions with, I know we all hate this word, with your business. Right, you you have to you have to pay attention to that piece, and if you're not, you will see this massive influx, and then you will see a massive exodus as well. So, um, I would love to help if if you are interested. But you can find everything, everything. Fire Marshall two hundred five on Instagram, my book, my podcasts, all of it. But uh, I appreciate it. You know, thanks for having me on, guys, and for sure. I hope uh, I hope everyone goes out there and finds their power. Awesome, man. Awesome, brother. Be safe with your trip, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Take care.
All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the podcast with Elliot. And uh, you know, it's funny is uh, when <laughs> Elliot was talking about, you know, I don't remember the Uma Plata setup I was trying to hit at the competition, but I remember everything else around the competition. You know what I was thinking about? Mm. I was thinking about the microtel. Oh my gosh, so was I. So were you really? The, the, yes, I was the, thinking the about the, the experiences. Fantastic. Right, I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. Master Worlds. You and I sleeping in the same bed. Uh huh. And me and my my sleep cocoon. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> and then uh, and then the microtel the terrible terrible hotel we went to in charlotte so check this out don't so check this out so so we're getting ready to go down to uh to north carolina um for this competition 2016 um eugene gets the hotel uh and he and he gets one it's it's a microtel and he got a good deal on it right and um it had a lot of bad reviews. Now, not usually true. bad reviews for like, you know, just for a run of the mill hotel, usually it's not a big deal. It's like, cause I mean, like people just love to gripe about stuff. You know, they'll be like, uh, I went to the Taco Bell and it was, I mean, it's the Taco Bell. Like I've seen negative reviews for Taco Bell. So I'm like, it's a Taco Bell. What the hell did you expect? <laughs> um, but, um, so it's like, you know, it's probably not gonna be that bad. And one of, uh, one of our other buddies, Chris Dukes was going with us and Dukes was like, I'm going to get a extra hotel just in case no he got one well, and i was saying he, he, he got, got one regardless well, he got one yeah but he wanted to sleep by himself he just no he, he didn't want to sleep by himself he was just making sure he didn't stay in the but anyway let's get to it so he gets a hotel right <laughs> next to it at like the comfort inn or whatever it was we get to the, we get to this place and i mean as soon as we drive up you instantly know the reviews are probably on the money we get there and they're like people literally hanging out of the window smoking <laughs> like you know like, oh man and we go inside and like it just stinks. It stinks like it smells like cigarettes. Um, and it just stinks and it's stale. And you know, there's just there's interesting, we we'll call them that, people like wandering around. And uh, we go to the hotel room, the door is ajar, it's open. And we walk in and there's like scratch marks all over the carpet. Is that what is that what it was? What? Then we find a, a, a used uh no, that was that was the next day. Oh, it was the next day. So yeah, so so all this stuff. So anyway, so so we eventually like we we leave that we go we stay with Chris at his hotel room and we get out of this 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 dirty dirty place. And um, what's funny is I've stayed in a micro hotel before that wasn't like that, by the way. So again, it's just that one. Um, you don't have to keep telling the story. I think they get it. No, it's pretty good though. But but here, here's here's where it comes full circle, full circle. So. At the time, there was a hurricane coming in, and so all the hotels were all backed up because, I mean, nobody, I mean, from, from we tried to find a hotel afterwards, couldn't find one. My buddy, um, a friend of mine, a black belt, uh, was competing that same day, and he basically came into town, didn't think about it either, calling up every hotel that he could get a hold of trying to find a hotel room. He finds one at the microtel. It was your room. He, he found basically he because he called and they said yeah we just had a room become available after we left, and so he stayed there. And then the next morning he walks out and what does he find right outside of his hotel door? He finds a used condom. Well, they're, they're safety first, too. Yeah, right. Being safe out there. Yeah, being safe. So, um, <laughs> so it, it was an, it was interesting. So we remember that. <laughs> And then, like, my match was, like, two minutes longer. So I was like, yeah, I took the guy down and got his mission. I was uh, like, whatever. I, had a good, I remember my turn. That was a good tournament for me. Yeah. Well, purple belt. Well, it started off rough. Lost your first match. Yeah, the guy. And then you. Barum swept me. Yeah. And then literally held me down in half guard and yeah. didn't let me move for four yeah. minutes. But then the, but then he went and choked, like, a bunch of dudes in the open and, t and took second. I, well, I got second in... Uh... No, 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 no. Listen, oh, he, no, no. Hold on a second. Oh, I didn't remember this because I, I got a, a loop oh. choke on the dude in my division for like, oh, in did, like you, ten seconds. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then I was in the final second division. No, uh, same division. Yeah, but second, my second, second, second in, Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. My second match, uh -huh. and the dude swept me. Yeah. Uh, so you got second in your division. Yes, and then I got second in the open. Open, right? And then uh, my buddy Dukes. He lost his first match, and I made him do the. But it was like you know. He didn't want to get his medal. Yeah, he was being. I was like, dude, go get your bronze medal. Well, Darn well, it! Well, it doesn't uh, matter if then, you. But if I made him do the open, and then he did great in the open. He took he a did. second. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, so that's so the microtel. What we're figuring out is that the microtel was the key ingredient in our success. The microtel during that was trip. not the ingredient to anything except for uh, venereal disease. Oh boy, waiting for you outside your door. <laughs> um, anyway. So that with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed that random story. Uh, big thanks to our sponsor, Charlotte's Web. Uh, if you want to check out any of their CBD products, again, I'm a big fan of theirs. Uh, I would encourage you to try the sleep gummies. And again, take try for a month. See what you think. Like any supplement or anything that you try, you always want to kind of see how, what kind of effect it has. So if you buy the product, if you go to charlottesweb.com, promo code jiu -Jitsu. 
save 10% or 15% on the order. If you go there and you get their sleep gummies or you get one of the tinctures, be consistent with it for a month, see the effect that it has on you, kind of go from there. Um, EpicRollBJJ.com, really cool jiu-jitsu gear, everything from geese, rash guards, shorts, t-shirts, the whole thing, even got fanny packs. So I love it. I wear mine all the time. If you want to, if you want to embody your, uh, like sort of center your um, inner John Donaher um, with a fanny pack, go check I it out. I hear it gives you two stripes instantly on your belt. Two stripes instantly. Instantly. Um, you're not going to guarantee that. Speak to your coach. But Results may vary. Results may vary. That's right. <laughs> Results may vary. Uh, promo code is Jujitsu. <laughs> Say 15% on the order. EpicRollBJJ.com is the website. Manscaped. We'll do Manscaped now. Yeah, Manscaped. Manscaped. I'm sorry. We, we, uh, we usually like... Eugene's like pressing the little things. So if you're actually watching the video, you see the little the little websites pop up. Um, you can go to Manscaped and check out any of their male grooming stuff. Um, again, if you're in the if you're in the market for looking for a good trimmer that you can use from your beard to your balls, balls to your beard, however you want to start, you can check out their uh, website at Manscaped.com. Promo code is Jujitsu20. Save twenty percent on the order and get free shipping. Our last sponsor is Hoist. Again, it's a, it's an electrolyte drink with less sugar. And a tons more, and I, there's there's an actual stat that I have. It's like a, like a multiple times more electrolytes than 110 percent or something. I don't, or, know, it's something. I don't know. Anyway, it's a lot more uh, electrolytes. Basically, again, the, the reason why that's important for you. Um, <laughs> whenever I hear the word electrolytes, I think of uh, what is it called? Uh, idiocracy. <laughs> it's Brando. It's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. <laughs> um, electrolytes are good, especially as we're getting into summer months and you're training. If you run into things like cramps or fatigue, things like that, it's good to replenish those electrolytes as your body's just sweating out everything. Because as you're sweating you're and your muscles are firing, you're getting rid of electrolytes. You're using them up. And so, again, to help uh, replenish and recover after workouts or to help fuel those workouts, it's good to get a little bit of a added sugar. And it's also good to get a little bit of uh, extra electrolytes into the, the mix. Uh, and again, you can do that with Hoist. Uh, you can also uh, check their amount at www.drinkhoist.com. Promo code is Jujitsu. Save 10% on the order. And also, it's a good idea, you know, consult your doctor and stuff before you make any dietary changes. But uh, it's not a bad idea to, you know, get a little salt going, like, you know, some sea salt. If you're getting ready to eat your pre-workout meal or whatever, have a little extra salt with it, especially if it's if it's hot where you train. It's useful. Um, and again, if you guys want to support the podcast directly, you can go to our website at patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast uh, at the time of recording this. And I'm getting ready to upload a video that's taking one of my recent uh, YouTube rolling videos and breaking it down and why I'm rolling like I'm rolling. Um, because there's a few things that I've been doing recently um, as I'm going through a different phase of my training. And I'll sort of lay that out for you. And it's mainly a way to sort of become a little bit more efficient and to try to find different ways to do things. Um, so again, maybe that could be useful to some of you guys that are maybe trying to, if you're stuck in like a plateau, for instance, it's a really good idea to do this. It helps me kind of get out of my own funks uh, sometimes. And so you can check that video out on the Patreon. And then uh, also, if you guys want to ever figure out or hear about what's going on in my neck of the woods and have a direct Sort of a direct line of communication to me. You can uh, join my email list, uh, the Chew Crew email list. That's uh, at chujitsu.net. I'll give you a couple free jujitsu ebooks that you get. So uh, there's a game plan ebook that you can get to help you build your BJJ game plan. There is a drilling ebook. And there's even like a home workout that we did, a uh, home workout book, booklet that we put together last year at the start of the, um, the coronavirus. And so if you want to get all that stuff, you can go to chujitsu.net. Get the free ebooks, sign up for the email list, and then again, I'll communicate with you through there. You'll get a daily email from me with all kinds of different stuff, everything from events coming up to also just sort of the inner workings of what I'm working on or what I'm thinking about right now related to jiu-jitsu training and uh, stuff off the mat as well. And, uh, you know, if at any point you don't want to get those emails, you can always unsubscribe. So with that said, guys, thank you for joining us this week on the podcast. We'll talk to you next time.